please join in singing number 426, Canticle of the Sun, number 426. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered and said, Oh, would that my words were written down, would that they were inscribed in a record, that with an iron chisel and with lead they were cut in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my vindicator lives, and that he will at last stand forth upon the dust whom I myself shall see, my own eyes, not another's, shall behold him. And from my flesh I shall see God. My inmost being is consumed with longing. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. None of us lives for oneself, and none of us dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he may, that he may be Lord of both the dead and the living. For we shall stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God, so that each of us shall give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. On behalf of Father Craniac, Deacon Eric, and myself, we want to extend our sympathies to all of you at this time of Dorothy's passing, but more importantly, we want to thank you for inviting us to be part of this celebration of her entrance into the kingdom of light. Dorothy used to always say to me, you know, I've been to a lot of your funerals. I can't wait to see what you say at mine. <laughs> and I used to tell her, oh, that's going to be a long way off. Well, she and I met 19 years ago this coming Easter. It was a long way off. She looked the same. I'm catching up. But the reality is, as I looked over her funeral plans, I noticed something rather familiar. It was my handwriting. And it dawned on me that there was a certain point early on in my time here at Immaculate Conception when we wanted to help people plan their own funerals because we were coming to terms with a lot of children and grandchildren that didn't know exactly what their parent or grandparent might have wanted. So we took the opportunity of the Feast of St. Joseph, the patron of a happy death, 
to do a little catechesis about a funeral mass, what the readings meant, what the songs conveyed, what the prayers said about our relationship with God. And sure enough, Dorothy did just that. She chose every song, every reading, who's doing the readings. She just probably wrote it down on a piece of paper or one of those many envelopes from one of the organizations that was hitting her up for money and handed it to me. Oh yeah, we know all about that. She was one of the most generous people, but oh, how Kevin would wait until she would go out west and then he'd go in and get rid of all that mail from people that wanted her to plant a tree, save a whale, chain herself to something. But she gave me all of these notes and I wrote them down and as I looked at them in the sacristy, I couldn't help but think, today we gather on the feast of St. Joseph, the patron of a happy death. And the reason why he's the patron of a happy death is because he left this world and went home to God in the presence of his wife and his son, the Blessed Mother and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I've been in two different pastorates since my time here at Immaculate Conception, but I've often spoken of the last window over here. It is the death of St. Joseph. He's not in the window, but it is Mary and Jesus comforting one another, consoling one another, and then moving on with all of the blessings and all of the gifts that Joseph gave them in their time together. We gather on this feast of the patron of a happy death. And yes, in all of our sadness and sorrow, we recognize just that, because Dorothy was gathered together with all of her family, with all of those good wishes, with all of those heartfelt thoughts and appreciation for all that she did and all that she offered over these 96 years. And today, she celebrates that eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. One of the things Kevin mentioned to me just before we started was, it was just a month ago that she was telling him, got to make plans for the family reunion, and oh, how I would hear about these family reunions, and how she looked forward to them and how she was just so motivated and, and, and alivened by coming together and sharing the stories and, you know, all about when we did this and when we did that and growing up in Cleveland Heights and going, you know, here and going there and you got to go to St. Anne's. I think it's Communion of Saints now. And we've added one more saint to that communion as Dorothy joins them in that eternal kingdom. But I think to myself, while Kevin didn't get to make those reservations for this year's family reunion, God did. God made a reservation for Dorothy to have that family reunion with all of those who have gone on before her. They welcomed her in, and she's probably still holding court, sharing stories. She's catching them all up about everything all of you have been doing, all that's been going on in your lives, every single one of you. One of the other things that I always thought about Dorothy, now, one thing about Dorothy, you know, she could just get you but she could take a joke even at her expense. She was a rare breed. She could give, but she could take. And she just, I think, loved being part of it all. She just loved being part of her family and part of her church and part of her community. But one of the things that I always recognized in Dorothy, and I conveyed this to Kevin a few days ago when we were texting back and forth, I always saw her and I think this was conveyed in a certain way in her obituary, as a woman ahead of her time. Her education, her passions, her interests. And I said to Kevin, the conventions of that time gave her to Jim and all of you. But who knows what Dorothy Callahan would accomplish if she was graduating from John Carroll this spring. But we don't have to guess, because she did accomplish it through all of you. She was so proud and so much in love with each and every one of you. Yes, she with her education and her knowledge and her passions for life and every interest and every strong opinion, she was still that driving force. And she saw all of that perhaps unlived reality from her own life in all of you, in her children, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and every generation to come as much as she's probably looking down now thinking let's wrap it up now we need to get moving she's going to be looking down on all of you and continue to be that proud and loving and devoted and dedicated mother 
and grandmother and great-grandmother, member of this parish community, member of the larger community, and yes, all those little charities that she probably was able to sneak that envelope away from you when you were cleaning out her house each time. She was a woman of great generosity, a woman of great intellect, a woman of great interests and passions. That is the greatest legacy she can pass on and has passed on to each and every one of you. Yes, we gather together today on the Feast of St. Joseph, and we thank Joseph and Mary and Jesus, that holy family, for now welcoming her home to be with all of her family who have gone before her, and to now, like that good mother and grandmother and great-grandmother, to prepare a place for all of you. But with all due respect, two days ago, we celebrated the High Holy Day, St. Patrick Day. And just think of how that celebration was made all the greater, because Dorothy Ann Callahan Poland was there to celebrate with the shamrocks and shillelaghs and everything that was included, the great faith and the great love and the great joy that was and is and always will be her legacy of life and love. For Dorothy, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. For our sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of our sister Dorothy, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend, Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all of those whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, give her peace and heal her souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer Christ Jesus and the voice of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them the face in your kingdom. For we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. This time we're going to please be seated as our gifts are going to lie in the floor.
We beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying, as one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we might live forever. And so in company with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share with one another the sign of peace.